Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In today's video for Reaper, we're going to start on a journey of creating our first basic mix. Now I want to emphasize right from the get-go of this video that there's no right or wrong way of working with mixing your tracks. It's a subjective particular you know, subject. Everyone's got their own way of working. And I'm sure that the ways that I work, people will pick up and say, well, there's a better way of doing it. And I'm open to any suggestions. I'm still learning. I'm learning every day, every time I use this. So when you're mixing your tracks, don't take this as a gospel way of doing it. This is just one suggestion for the basic ways of working. Some of the things we're going to do in this are the kind of thing that you're going to want to do on every single track that you work on. You're going to have your own way of EQing, you're going to have your own set of ears, your own set of monitors, and you're going to work in a way that is comfortable for you. This is just a guideline. So this is my disclaimer for this video. So let's take a look at how I start working with my tracks. So let's briefly go over what we've got on screen in front of us. I've got a full guitar track, full drum track, full bass track. There's no vocals on this. There's left and right guitars, there's some solo guitars, there's multiple bass tracks, and there's a MIDI drum track that's all using Easy Drummer. I've set up some very basic sort of mixes, so I've got my levels where I want. I've done gain staging prior to that, so if you haven't seen how to gain stage to set everything up so you're working from, from parity right from the get-go, I'd recommend going back and take a look at my video covering gain stages part one and two. If you're happy with that, you're happy with the way you've got everything input into your door, then you're going to have something very similar to this. You can see that I've tweaked the bass levels to make sure everything is as I want it. The drum tracks have had a slight little bit of tweaking. There's no automation on this, so this is just basic editing. If I shrink this down, you can see that some of my guitar tracks, mainly my rhythm tracks, have some automation on there to adjust the volume at certain points within the song. And that's both on the left and the right hand side. We'll take a look at how we can apply things like that in a future video. I'm not going to cover that in this particular video. This is more about mixing your tracks. I've also gone through and time aligned various different parts of my track to ensure that everything is sitting on the beat. Again, if you haven't seen how to do this, I recommend going to take a look at my video on how to do exactly that, how we can time align everything and we can tweak everything to make sure that it's exactly as we want it to be. So we've got the starting point. There's no EQ on this track, there's no limiters, there's nothing at all. So if I bring the mixer up, you can see all I've got are several instances of either Easy Mix or Easy Drummer. And all they're being used for is the actual sounds. So if I open this Easy Mix up, you can see that I'm using the Epic Lead patch on Easy Mix. If I open this one up, you can see I'm using, again, the Epic Lead. What's the chances, eh? Uh, aggression. We've got various different ones on there. And that's all that's really on there. We've panned left and right for the guitars. Other than that, it's a pretty standard kind of setup that you're going to have once you've recorded your tracks and you've gone in and got everything as you want it. So let's take a look at the first stages where we start looking at the EQ. And I'm going to particularly start with the guitars. So this video is fundamentally going to cover the basics of working with your guitars. The next video will then take a look at the bass and we'll take a look at drums and we'll start looking at bringing it all together in the final video. So let's take a look at what we're going to do with the guitars to start off with. So first things first, let's look at how I've got my guitars set up. I've got two groups of guitars. I've got my rhythm guitar section, which is the dark blue. And then I've got my lead guitar section, which is this turquoise greeny blue. We're just going to shrink the, the lead guitar part down because we're going to concentrate on the rhythm guitars, the rhythm guitar section throughout the entire song. So what I've got is I've got my rhythm guitar section is parented through a master channel. One of the benefits of this is that if I'm going to use uh, effects that are going to be applied to the guitar section as a whole, we're not talking about the, the lead guitars, we're just talking about the rhythm guitars, it makes it easier to have a parent that you can apply that group effects to and everything that sits underneath all the child tracks will be affected in the same way. This means you've got only one instance of that particular effect running on your track, which means you're going to cut down the CPU usage, which should mean then you get a much more efficient workflow. If you're working on a laptop, that's going to be something that's quite useful for you because generally the laptops you're going to be using are not quite as powerful as, a, as a, your main PC. So you may find that you struggle sometimes when you start to put a lot of effects on your, on your tracks. It's a good way of working. 
So then we've got each individual track, like I say, is panned left and right. I've done my basic mixes, so I've got some initial levels set up, so everything is roughly where I want it to be. I'm quite happy with the layout on that. So the first thing I want to do is start taking a look at applying some basic EQ. So let's take a look at how we start applying EQ to our guitar tracks. So what are we trying to achieve with the EQing in our digital audio workstation? If we take a look at this track, I've got two guitars, drums and bass at its basic level. So what we've got is there are certain frequencies that overlap each other. So for example, on your typical guitar, you're going to have lower frequencies when you play in the lower strings that are going to encroach upon the frequencies that are going to be used inside the bass track. If you're dealing with things like 7-string, 8-string and 9-string guitars and gent and that kind of music, you're going to encroach even more so with the bass frequencies. So what we're looking to do is free up those frequencies, not overlap, and ensure that the bass is allowed to sit in the bass frequencies, the guitars sit in the guitar frequencies, the drums, the kick drums, and so on. So everything has a nice balance to it. So when you're going to work with a guitar, you're going to find that even though the sound you end up with once you strip out those low frequencies sounds a little bit thin and weak and not the kind of thing you'd, you'd want to hear, when you bring the bass and the bass drum frequencies back into it, they provide all that low end and you'll be surprised at how different your track sounds. So let's concentrate to start off with in this first video on EQ in the guitars. We're going to start off with the left and right guitars and we're going to take a look at how we can just do the basic EQ or how we can take out some of that fizz that is introduced when you're dealing with distorted guitars. Now the way I've got my track set up is I'm using two VSTs and they're different ones. So your left guitar and your right guitar sound different, which obviously gives you a more um, detailed kind of soundscape. If you have the same guitar tracks with the same patches and the same EQs, they can kind of just not really work that well. Again, this is just my opinion and you may disagree with me completely. But for me, I like to have different sounds to my left and right just to give me a little bit more flavour in my track. So the EQ that I use on the left track is not going to be identical to the one on the right track because they've got their own characteristics and they require their own fundamental uh, tweaks and adjustments. So we'll start off with the right track. And let's just mute that, sorry, let's just solo that so we can just take a listen what's going on. So let's take a listen. Okay, so you can see it's definitely got that fizziness to it. So let's just EQ that. So we're going to click. I'm using my EQs and compressors, and I'm just going to use the stock Reaper EQ, the Re EQ. And obviously, anything that we do in this will apply to pretty much every EQ out there. They're all going to work in fundamentally the same way. So, what we take a look at is we've got a four bar or four band EQ with nothing being applied, it's completely blank. So if I play that again, you can see you've got a representation of the audio being played over the EQ. And that allows us to effectively see what it is we're working with and how we can just sort of adjust that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start off with the first thing that I always do when I'm dealing with the guitars and that's just to take off the low end frequencies. Now you can see we've got 50 to 100 hertz. Anything roughly below 50 hertz, you're dealing with sub bass, it's the kind of thing if you're using bass drops and stuff like that. Guitars really don't need to be sitting inside those frequencies at all. Like I say, they're fundamentally there for your bass. So what we can do is we can just choose to have a high pass filter and you can see that'll roll off all the low end frequency. So if I start the track back up now, you can, what we're going to see is we're going to get a visual representation. So all those frequencies there are being completely ignored. They're being rolled off nicely just to get rid of that, that extra bass that we don't want in the guitar. So let's take a listen to that and see what's, what's done. Now you may not be able to hear it that well on there because there's not a lot of low frequency in this. But it's worth noting that it, it, it is there and it's worth taking that out just to allow, like I say, you don't encroach upon the bass frequencies. Next thing I'll tend to do is I'll take this band and what I'll do is I will roughly position it where 
I know that the frequencies are the fizzy frequencies, should we say, around the two to three, th uh, three kilohertz. I'll create a gain boost, and we'll just narrow this down quite, quite nicely. And what we're going to do with this is we're just going to use this to scope across our guitar to find frequencies or to find a frequency that is particularly harsh and fizzy. It's one of those things that when you're actually listening to the track before doing this EQ, and you don't really notice it, but once you've done it, it really does stand out. It's surprising once you start to sort of AB you enable it and sort of just to see what it's like. It's surprising how much of a difference it makes to your guitar sound. So let's just run that. And what I'm going to do is I just sort of scan across the frequencies until I find the rough area that I think that I don't like that. And then we'll take that out. So I'll just use the frequency. Now, I don't know if you can hear that on the recording, a sort of high-pitched squealy kind of sound. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take the gain and do an opposite. And what that's doing is that's take, cutting those frequencies out. Now, you may find you've got to do this a couple of times with different guitar um, sort of sounds that you've got on there. You know, if you're making it up or if you're using VSTs like I am, you're going to find a certain frequency that are just really horrible in that guitar sound. And scanning across the frequency range is a good way of finding out where they are and then taking them out to get rid of those, those harsh frequencies that are really just quite horrible. So let's just, I'll show you with and without. So like I say, you might not pick it up perfectly on the audio because this doesn't record brilliantly. But hopefully you can, you can pick out the differences when I AB it. And I can hear that little high frequency, the high pitch sort of whine. And gone. It's kind of like a whooshing sound. It's kind of weird, but believe me, if you can't hear it on my audio, try it on your own guitar tracks. Especially if you're dealing with distorted guitars, there's, there's a, always a, a, an element of fizziness that is really quite harsh and horrible in there. What I'll generally tend to do then is I'll create a slight boost of my high frequency just to give that a little accentuation. Now again, this is the kind of thing that is subjective and you've got to find out does it work for you in your mix. And the other thing that I always recommend is don't listen to it in isolation. In other words, do your EQ on your guitar track in this instance on its own with nothing else. You're soloing that out and then put it back in the mix and try turning those uh, enabling and disabling the different EQ adjustments that you made and see does it improve or detract from the sound of the overall mix. You know, because it's the kind of thing that it's again, it's subjective, but you're going to find that when you're doing this kind of thing, that it might sound a lot better when you take it in isolation, but once you put it back in the mix, it's actually detrimental to the overall sound. So again, like I say, try it before and after and introduce it, and you may have to tweak just so it sits great. This is just a starting point. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is with this fourth band, I'm gonna set that to be a high shelf. Around the five to six K mark, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give that a slight gain boost. So what that'll do is that'll just increase the higher frequencies. Like I say, this is, again, it's completely subjective. Try it if you like it, use it. If you don't, stay away from it. So let's try that again. Only a slight difference. So let's just get rid of this. And let's just bring up all our effects so we can, oh, wrong track. So we can turn that on and off. So this is before the EQ, this is after. We'll adjust the frequency being taken out, just remove a bit more of that, that low end frequency. Now, like I say, in isolation, it doesn't necessarily sound that good, but once you put it back in the mix and your bass and everything is all mixed in there, that low end that you stripped out, the, the, the frequency that are not really needed on your guitar, they'll be introduced back in there with the bass and you'll find that the overall mix will just sound a lot clearer. Well, that's the basic EQing. So the next thing we're gonna do is go in and put a compressor on that. So all I'm gonna do is come back up Choose Recomp, which is Reaper's compressor. And I just generally tend to use the stock um, preset that's on there. So we've got distorted electric guitar. That generally works pretty well for me. So we'll just run that and see what that does.
I said there's not really much going on there because the guitars are pretty pretty well sort of grounded in there so we're not finding we're peaking very much but this is just going to smooth that out if you find that you've got a lot of very fast attack very harsh picking or you, you're sort of very they say dynamic in the way that you play the guitar and you want to smooth that out you want to make sure that there's no really loud points and really quiet points so you kind of have just too much of a dynamic range from the high points to the loud points to the quiet points then you can use your compressor to just adjust that and smooth everything out we'll take a look at how a compressor works in a little bit more detail in another video but like i said we'll leave that for a video of its own so like i said i'm just going to leave this at the stock distorted electric guitar i may come back in and tweak that a little bit at a later date but for now that's that's okay for me that's kind of sitting where i want it to be so we've done the basic eq on our first rhythm guitar now i'm going to go back in and do the same kind of thing again for my my other guitar track my right guitar oh sorry my left guitar i'm going to go through eq it compress it do all the things we've done on this video well i hope you found this first part of the introduction to mixing useful we've covered quite a lot there's been some theory involved in this there's been a lot of explanation in how i do things and why i do things but hopefully it's given you a starting point for your own mixes in the next video we'll take a look at how we start working with the bass and then we'll find in the final video we'll look at the the drums and then we'll bring it all together to, to ensure that everything sits where it should do within the mix hope you found this useful if you have please hit the like button below please subscribe to the channel so you can be kept up to date all the videos as they're added to the channel if you've got any comments feedback or anything you'd like to see in any future videos please pop those in the comment section below and until next time Good luck with your mixes, good luck with your recording, and I'll see you again soon. Take care.